Hello, my name is Phil Parker, and this little video is designed to introduce people to the automatic creation of content or titles that might be in book form, game form, video, or television form, whereby a computer pretty much does 100% of the work required by a typical human author. The idea is to take a very small amount of information and have a computer basically write the entire book or create the entire movie or create a PC software game, be it for mobile phones or personal computers. Now, I focus mostly on the business of education. This video will step you through a few simple ideas on how one can create title content in an uh, automated fashion. We're going to start with the example of an economist who is given a small piece of information about, let's say, the anti-psychotic drug market and wonders what the latent demand would be for that same product worldwide across all market areas. Using a little bit of artificial intelligence, a computer program has been created that mimics the thought process of someone who would be responsible for doing such a study. But rather than taking many months to do the study, the computer accomplishes this in about 13 minutes. The way it works is you suppose you see something in a newspaper that tells you some small piece of information like the market is about 11.5 billion dollars. How large is the market in other countries of the world? If we can open up the application and start the process, you'll discover that it doesn't take that much data input for the computer to discover what's the optimal econometric model to apply to such a scenario. And so what the computer does is basically open up a main form. We then give it instructions on basic things like, I want to do a study on topic X. You select the priors or what you already know about that subject, and it may be very little information. Then you launch the application by giving it simple instructions like write a report over year X to year Y. And then it'll immediately start thinking, well, Given the small amount of information, what is the optimal model that could be applied to this question? How would I organize the data? What would be the implications across countries, given income distributions and given the amount of information that I have been given? Then it simply opens a Word document and starts creating the report based on the econometric models that it's been nested with. It then reasons through all of the different countries one by one, outputting one page after another, and it will do so in a fairly quick order. The screens you see here is a relatively slow computer and typically uh, it in fact doesn't even show up on a screen. These are being run on servers that do it automatically. It will then open a Word document and export the information into Word just like a real author would out of their minds so to speak or out of spreadsheets and then it formats that information and it uses a number of editorial rules, in essence the intelligence of what an editor uses to format a document. Once in a while it'll discover something interesting like a variance in the data and it'll simply create a graph knowing that that might be interesting to the reader, but it formats it in such a way that it actually doesn't violate editorial conventions. It continues about its way formatting, putting headers and footers, and making summary statements based on the information that it's been able to create from the econometric models that were back in the database program using queries. Once it's done all of that repetitive cleanup, it will then save the document, update its table of contents, and then produce a 235-page report. This is only an example of this. Right now the program stopped. You can then look at the results. Some genres take quite a while. This one took about 13 minutes. And in the report you'll see a title page, a copyright page, a table of contents, chapters, chapter headings, summaries of the results, summary of conclusions, and many other issues that might be related to the methodology of preparing the report given the information that was available for this report. Most reports are actually run automatically without human inputs, but this gives an illustration of how it actually works. I haven't just done books that were econometric in nature, but also education books like crossword puzzle books. If if you go to Google Books, you can simply search for things like Chinese crosswords, and you'll discover that crossword puzzles can be created completely by computer. But it's not just a puzzle, but the entire book where there's a logic across the different puzzles so that words are not repeated too often. The easiest words appear first. Now, this is a Chinese crossword puzzle book where the clue is in Chinese and the answer is in English. And this is for people who want to learn English if they're Chinese speakers. Later in the book, when the puzzles are more difficult, you'll notice that the... Uh, the title of the puzzle changes as well as the word. One book covers about 3,000 words. Other titles include uh, annotated classics works. So if a Spanish speaker wants to read an English classic in the footnotes, you'll see the translation of the most difficult words. Again, the computer determines what those are and makes sure that no word is repeated 
page after page. Also um, posted many other genres. Those can be found in Amazon.com. Those other genres include healthcare guides, whether they're targeted towards uh, or useful for patients or for physicians. Both genres were created. And probably you would not see these books produced using human methodologies because some diseases are so rare, there might only be 10 people in the world that have that disease. So no publisher would normally publish such a book, but using computers to do this instead to create this content allows for these very thinly sold titles actually to be published. And um, and many patients find these quite useful as well as physicians. The methodology is independent of the format, of course. I've also been using this to create videos using a massive database uh, system and uh, one database uh, video project I'm working on is a word of the day in about 600 different languages. This one is related to uh, my online dictionary. And now, Webster, the tomato, explains to Dr. House his Rolling Stones symptom of the day. My tongue is swollen. Macroglossia. Thank you, really. You're a great audience. Okay, that's a little of a cheeky example of a word of the day. We'll be doing about a hundred thousand of those across many languages. Which brings us to television, which is another area where I'm preparing various types of content generation programs to come up with 24-hour news programs, 24-hour game shows, etc. Especially for languages which would not have the wherewithal to have programming in their native tongues. This involves reverse engineering the formulas behind many of the formats that we see in television or or film, and replacing human actors with 3D animated characters that are scripted using automation programs. The virtual sets, lighting, motion capture, texturing, and all the things that go along with animation are also automated and scripted with a large program. Using INSEAD as a virtual set, I'm now working on education programs that can teach virtually any subject in any language, and I'm also generalizing that to other formats such as game shows and the like. One of the advantages, of course, of using computer-generated content in this way is that you can have actors or actresses perform a variety of activities that might be difficult to demonstrate in a conventional set. Likewise, they can take on different figures that would be more appealing to the audience depending on the age of the audience. You can see some test renders of the beginnings of these projects on my YouTube space if you'd like to see more. The characters you see here is a small sample of the characters that we're actually playing with right now, and they perform in virtual sets representing just about every geographic space and architectural design one would need for much of the television programming one sees today. The output of these programs can be rendered in just about any format required, be it for streaming, websites, mobile communications devices, iPods, HDTV cable, etc., because different users would likely require different formats. Distribution itself, of course, can be automated as well. This brings us to 3D gaming, which is a very popular format for many people, and I've created a bilingual game series right now using the exact same approach, featuring a clever tomato who can teach Spanish speakers English. Fear. Dry. Dab. Father. Okay, well, those are games that are being created pretty much on the fly using a large automation program, and those will basically cover all topics one can imagine or all language pairs. Again, with little human intervention, those games took about five minutes to create each. If you would like to get more information, uh, you can go to my YouTube site where I posted a number of links to videos of this, and uh, you can actually contact me via email if you're interested in more information.